Hold it! Hold it. Just, just hold it. You. Well, you put on weight. They paroled me three months ago. Been looking for you everywhere. This is your place? My place. When did you move in here? I, uh, about a month ago. Photography. Who taught you all this? State of New York. You're kidding. Rehabilitation. It's the new thing for first offenders. What do you do? Cheesecake? Pinups? And all that. And all that. I always wanted to be a photographer. How much do you make? I'm did you all right? You always had the luck. Some jail they sent you to. Didn't they teach you a trade on the inside? Oh, sure. MML, four hours a day. MML? Laundry in the tree. I'm mm -hmm. Mr. Clean. Hey, you're not married, are you? Hell no! She just comes in here to, uh. To what? To clean up, that's all. She does more than that. Lisa? Lisa? Huh, in a dump like this? See her again? Not a trace. You have looked. You bet I've looked. She owes me two grand. Me too. Promised she'd double it by the time I got out. Instead, she pays off. I'll kill her. You couldn't kill anybody. Least of all, Lisa. So where's the action? What action? Like you said in your message. If you want to pay me two grand, so that's what I want. If you want a quick and easy grand, head to 27B Grogan Street at 9 exactly. Doors open. Next time, go on to yourself. If you popped out of there a second sooner, you'd have popped this in your teeth. You did send that message. No. You got the same message. Just like that. Then he hung up. Then who hung up? Search me. Thought it must have been from you. And all this. Go on then, say it. This isn't your place. And you're flat broke. You're not even a pornographer. I'm worse than broke. I owe 800 to a loan shark, and I'm two months behind with interest. Ooh, that's bad. So Stay me for sale. 250? If I don't come up with some juice by Monday, they're taking me to the dentist. 250, he says. And I have eaten since I came out. How much for this? Cameras? You can't give them away. So, uh, who lives here? Give me a few minutes. I'll find something. Now, what have we here? Enough cold cuts for a long weekend. Don't! Hey, this photographer is pretty crafty. Keeps a 20 in the back of the freezer. So leave it there. Leave that alone. Find what I had on mustard. <laughs> Who lives here? Strange how you degenerate when you're free. And sure, I can guzzle any slop they dish out. Now, if I can't find the mustard, I'll get the shakes. What did he sound like? I found him. I found him. What did he sound like? The Joker who phoned? Some kind of foreigner. Five to one was a put on. Where were you when he phoned? My usual place. With you. My usual place. So. So. Lisa? It's got to be Lisa. Who else knows where to find us? What's through there? Bedroom and bathroom. Another entrance. No, bars on all the windows, just like these. I wonder if this place is bugged. Lisa! Lisa! Shut up! Come out, come out from wherever you are! Shut up! Uh, you've got the wrong place. Oh, have I? 
Then, could I be interested in you in this rug for your bedroom? I'd be giving this away at six ninety five, but for you, sir, no. No rugs, thank you. Then, if I may, just deliver my message. Who from? From the party that followed you not half an hour ago. Why the hell didn't you say so? Thank you, Mr. Tallman. That's not my name. Oh, I beg your pardon. I had no idea you were there. Now, I'll be candid and honest with you gentlemen. Strictly speaking, this is not my carpet. I discovered it in a pile of junk in that torn down building at the back of here. And seeing as it's a little damp and a bit cheesy, $1.75 and I'll be on my way. Let's have the message. Then you can get that stupid thing out of here. Where is Lisa? I beg your pardon, Mr. Tallman. Let's get one thing straight, buddy. My name is not Mr. Tallman, and I have never heard of such a person. But it's a grand name, don't you think? Good old Mike Tallman. Don't you think it suits him fine, Sergeant Carlino? Sergeant who? And you will be Sergeant Carlino. Come on, who the hell are you? I am Harry Roach, junior and senior from Scarsdale. <laughs> Junior and Senior from Scarsdale. The message is out. Where is Lisa? The message, children, is that once upon a time there were two small con artists. I believe they just came out of jail. Poor fellows. <laughs> One of them was tall and rugged, and he'd drop in on a housewife when she was alone after she was a friend of her husband's. The other would show up a little later as a police detective. But the real brains of the outfit was a beautiful and talented girl. She could be young, old, French, Italian, or Katie from Kansas. Where is Lisa? Both men fell for her and would make little passes when the other wasn't looking. <laughs> and with a quite pathetic lack of success. Finally, she got bored with them, made an anonymous phone call to the police, and then disappeared taking their loot with her. As they say, there's no one quite so gullible as a con man in love. Who sent you here? And who are you? Where is Lisa? Where is she? Are you working for her? Or is she working for you? We are now all working for Lisa. Like you said on the phone, a quick and easy bribe. That is correct. Plus the 2,000 each that Lisa already owes us. You shall have it when? Tomorrow night. If we succeed. If we fail, nothing. Why didn't Lisa come here herself? Perhaps she was afraid of meeting you again before she could give you your money. So when do we meet her? Tomorrow night with the merchandise. Well, look, we don't even talk till we get 250 each. Lisa told me to give you 500 each on the balance on delivery. Any objections? <coughs> but first, may we have weapons on the table? Search me. I'm clean. Your brass knuckles. What brass knuckles? In your right pocket. I cannot negotiate in an atmosphere of mistrust. <coughs> and um, your little switchblade, Mr. Tallman. How do you protect yourself? Geraldine protects me. Isn't she beautiful? What does she do? This. Then, <clears throat> may we have Geraldine on the table as well? We may not. Why the hell not? Because she is the referee. Hmm. Not yet, Mr. Rowe. What's the merchandise? A child doll. A doll? A musical doll. Lisa last saw it a few days ago in Montreal, but she now believes it is somewhere in this apartment. How did it get here? While Lisa was at the airport in Montreal, she got into a conversation with a very nice photographer named Sam Hendricks, and she asked him if he would take the doll to her little girl who was at the New York Hospital. 
and he was most sympathetic. But before he could deliver it, Lisa arrived here herself and asked for it. And much to her surprise, he just couldn't find it. What do you mean, he couldn't find it? He couldn't find it. Lisa watched him search both these rooms, and then finally, acting as if it was no importance, she left. That was last night. How, how big is this doll? In weight, that is. Just under two pounds. Chloe <laughs> House with a music box? That's a lot of course. Is this the real stuff? Pure heroin? Nothing has ever been so pure. That will be worth over 50 grand. Do you push it yourself? Now, now, children, let's not get too greedy. Let's find the doll first, shall we? So Lisa sent you here to find the doll. Why does she need us? While this morning Lisa phoned this number and pretending she was the Thai actress named Luciana, she made an appointment to have some portraits taken by Mr. Hendricks at his studio tonight. Mr. and Mrs. Hendricks left this house just before seven. They walked to a movie where he left his wife and went on to a studio where he is still waiting for an alcohol. Are you getting it? Sure. Just pay attention. Well, I'm lost. So listen. What? I'm a first grade dropper. So give it to me like A, B, C. Lisa wants to get them out of here so she can come in and really go through the rules, right? That is correct. So right now the wife's out watching a movie and the photographer's waiting at his studio for some Italian broad who doesn't even exist. How long is he going to wait? Hmm, well, perhaps we'd better reassure him. You'll excuse me. Hello, Mr. Sam Hendricks. Ah, I am so glad. I am at Giano at Giano's restaurant. I have a message from Miss Luciana. She is so very sorry to be late. Uh, no, uh, wait, please. I put on a taxi two minutes ago. Il taxi per la signorina Luciana subito. <laughs> Mr. Hendricks. Any minute Miss Luciana will arrive. Be kind and wait for her. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. That should hold him there a bit longer. So, Lisa has been here already tonight? Yes, and she looked everywhere and still couldn't find it. So she searched everywhere. How'd she open this? And there's a closet in the bedroom that's locked. I'll open that. Uh, it's not in the closet. How do you know? Lisa looked. She found um, the key on the ledge just above it. And this? Well, does Lisa know about this safe? She does, and that's why you're here. Okay. You make the photographer open if he gets back here. But look, Mr. Lisa, we're not squeamish. Are you? I am. And that is not why you're here. Suppose, after some persuasion, he did open the safe and it wasn't in there. Then what? The doll's in that safe. Give you five to one. That's a chance Lisa is not willing to take. It may be in there, or he may have taken it somewhere else. He may have even given it to the police. We have to slide in this very gently. Believe me. The Lisa didn't call you to it here for nothing. What did she say? She said, don't let them twist any arms and you're not to steal anything. Let the wife find the doll and give it to you of her own free will. Hey, this is just like old times. So we can it. You better find out all you can about this guy. What's his name again? Hendricks. Sam Hendricks. Flew to Montreal last Sunday. Returned yesterday. Hey, 
and look what I can see out by the parking lot. What? A phone booth. Great. And two windows? That gives us nine signals. Six. Nine. Six. Off open and down for source six. It's three squared, you think? Uh, now. Now you've left me behind. Uh, just a little system of ours. One of us goes zonk, zonk, and then the phone rings. Just leave this to us, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Oh, by the way, the number of that phone booth in the car lot is 924-5309. Here. <clears throat> now, make a note of this number. Oh, and there's some information on that table, Mike. When do we start with this? Tonight? Tomorrow. A proud grandfather from Asbury Park will phone Mr. Hendricks and ask him to come out there and take some photos of his family tomorrow afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, one hour by express, about $75 to stay for dinner, and back to the there's a Volkswagen bus out in the uh, Mike! There you are. There's a Volkswagen bus um, out in the car lot. I'll meet you there in ten minutes. You stay here, Mr. Rose. Um, just a quick look around in case I've forgotten anything. We'll, we'll stay with you then. Better not all leave together. I guess you're right. Come on, Sark Carlino. Oh, by the way, about that closet in there. What about it? The key isn't on the ledge. Isn't it? Uh, Lisa must have taken it with her. Well, won't they miss it? When they get back here tonight. They would think the other one lost it. Then there's just one question. Before we go. Yes. Lisa told you an awful lot, didn't she? Lisa. Lisa. All those little details about how she worked. And about us. You see, we know Lisa very well. Yeah, and she would never give you anything. Unless she had to. <sighs> so... What's your question? <laughs> We'd just like to know what you've done with the key of that locked closet in there. All right, you! Through that door backwards and turn that way. Catch! Now drop Geraldine nice and easy. I'd rather not do that. I said drop Children! It. Children, will you settle for this? Flip it. By the way, I'm not on parole and no policeman has ever heard of me. But someone must have seen you with her somewhere. Never. I followed her many times, but we never actually met until she walked in there tonight. Stop it, Alice. You just told you all of that tonight? That and a good deal more. Will you just try and get away with this, Mr. Rose? We are out. You're on your own now. Sorry, Mike, but you were both so highly recommended. I need you. Well, that's too bad. Now you've got a body in there, and you are the one stuck with it. Now just listen, children! Think, think, think. If you walk out on me now, I will simply 
walk right out after you and leave Lisa in there. You've signed your name all over the park. And even if you could remember everything you touched, it would take uh, at least an hour to wipe off. Now, I've touched only one thing since I came in here. And before that, I wore these. Highly recommended, by the way. They're disposable. You buy them in enormous rolls from Hammond for Schlemmer. <laughs> Don't forget the safe, Sergeant. And the icebox. Now, just do exactly as I say, and the police will never even come in here. Will you stop acting like a housemaid? And listen! You have all tomorrow to do that. Now, one, get her out of here. Roll her up in this and dump it where I found it. And then meet me in the Volkswagen. Look, just let us out of this. No. I need you. For what? Everything we just had still holds good. We simply want to con the wife until she gives us the doll, and that's it. No one gets hurt. Not even a scratch. There is just one minor difference, perhaps. That, instead of working for Lisa, you're now working for me. And there's one other difference. You promised us our two plus one each. Less this 500, of course. But you can change the key to that. Yeah. All right. Two plus two, you say. We want 2,000 plus another 5,000 each tomorrow night. Quiet. She looks like the Luciana. What do you mean she hasn't even arrived yet? Delayed for nearly two hours. Who does she think you are? Well, I'm home now. Oh, the movie? It was great, but honey, you should have checked. It was in Swedish, and I even know the background music. Well, I'm home now. Well, I tried to walk home, but. I made a wrong turn somewhere, so I came by a taxi. Yes, a taxi. How well? What time will you be home? Eleven! Well, in that case, I better trot over to your studio now to keep the score. Don't worry, I won't cramp your style. Ciao.
Remember the number for police emergency? Just dial zero and say you're fine. Well, I'm said the operator gets busy. That urgent? So the murder does worry you. This one you must know. Four, four, three, one, two, three, four. Wait until I get the true numbers. Just don't ever leave me. That's 
Is she waiting for you at the bus station? It's a he. I'm meeting him at. No, I mean the woman who didn't turn up last night, uh, Luciana. Um, her? She got the back seat all right. <laughs> Nowhere near you. Oh, I'm sorry, honey, I didn't know you were there. Well, I'm here now. Well, you have to admit, that's my first lucky punch in weeks. Yeah, you're pretty lucky. Anyway, my ride's been late because I have a bad back, and I best. Oh, wait. Before you go, where does the icebox plug into the wall? What? The refrigerator. Where does it plug into the wall? Oh, you'll figure it out. And don't ask Gloria. We'll... I don't need Gloria, and I certainly don't need you. Ah. No, no, it's all right. Now he would be the world champion blind man. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
Gloria. Uh, is there someone there? Just a girl. Oh, come in, Gloria. She went out. <laughs> does, does Sam still go to the town now and then? Oh, yes, he was visiting his parents there last week. Have you ever met them? I, uh, no. Well, I'm sure sorry to have bothered you. Drop us a card next time you're around. Thank you. Thank you. Susie. Susie. Uh, Mike Tallman. Mike Tallman. It was a pleasure meeting you, and thank you for putting up with us. Oh my God! Hello? Oh, you're still there. I'm terribly sorry, but the fire is out. As a matter of fact, there wasn't even a fire at all, just some soup that had burnt up upstairs. Yes, you see, a little girl is supposed to be watching it, but you know how they are sometimes. Yes, everyone's all right. Thank you. Oh, how awful, Mike. Mike? What's with you? Oh, hello, Gloria. Who is that man that was in here? That was Mr. Tallman, a friend of Sam's. Oh, I see. Is the rosary list ready? Yes, it's on the table at $5. Do you see it? <sighs> yes, I see it. What else? Nothing else. My job for today is to defrost the ice cream. Now, if you'd like to help me. What did we do just then? Switch it to defrost, of course. Oh, no, that's not how we do it. It is, too. I've done it another hundreds of times. No, not with this one. If you set this one to defrost, all the milk freezes solid and all the jars crack open. We have to do it Sam's way. First, we just unplug the cord in the back, then take everything out and put it Okay! Together. Do it Sam's way, then. I'll go to the A&T. Did you close the door of the icebox? Yes. I didn't hear it shut. Okay, then. It's open. That's the girl. Thanks. For what? Oh, I thought you closed it. Well, I didn't. Now look here, Four Eyes. I thought I made this clear. When I open the icebox, I close it. And whenever you open it, you have to... Broken. Don't be afraid. Oh, nothing's broken. I don't 
like to speak to Mr. Sam Hunt? If you pardon, are you pleased to see I'm... Where is she? Where is Mrs. Roach? I, I believe you may have the wrong address. You see, this is 27 New York Street. And this is Henger. I'm not feeling too well. May I have a glass of water? Is your permanent address, Mr. Palmer? Yes, it is. Well, I won't bother you any longer then. And don't worry, Mrs. Hendricks. If something does go missing here, your husband will let me know, I'm sure. Yes, he will, and thank you for coming so quickly. You're entirely welcome. Particular reason. I'm not questioning her. Then why are you taking notes? Ah, 
I am not taking notes. I was going to check and see. If, if, if what? <coughs> if there was anything else I did want to ask. Well, if there is, I suggest you wait until Mr. Hendricks returns home. Now look, I am allowed to talk, aren't I? Talk, yes, but Mrs. Hendricks doesn't have to answer any of your questions if she doesn't want to. And if they didn't teach you that at police school, read the Constitution. Okay then, no more questions. Did they find that old man yet? Mr. Palmer, you're not a lawyer, right? Well, no, I'm not, but when you know. I didn't think you were. Well, that lot of help he was. That old man could be in New Jersey by now. Mike, is this room very dirty? No. Why? The sergeant kept dusting everything. Did you notice? Did he? Yes, all over the couch table and over by the table over there. I'll get it. He's probably got some more silly questions. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Hunt. No, Mr. and Mrs. Hendricks live here. Hendricks? I'm, I beg your pardon, but this is 27B Grogan Street. Well, yes, my name is Grote, Harry Grote Jr. Um, may I ask if an elderly gentleman dropped by today? Well, now, I don't know if he jumped by. Mr. Hendricks, if I may come in for a moment, please. You see, I believe that was my father. Yes, please, come in. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Grote, Mrs. Hendricks is blind. Oh, I understand, thank you. Mike, Mike! What is it? Something matter? I'm sorry. Mr. Rote, was it? I'm so very sorry. This happened, Mrs. Hendricks. I, I told my father wasn't uh, rude in any way. Well, now, he parched in here and then tore her dresser apart. Was that rude, do you think? Oh, my goodness. But let me reassure you, this is not as serious of a matter as you may think, Mr. Hendricks. I'm Mr. Tallman. Mr. Tallman, my father may appear a bit uh, erratic at times, but I assure you he would never harm anyone. Certainly not. Well, he just told me Mrs. Hendricks that if somebody leaves. Gloria, it's only your groceries. I'll come back later and give them now. Sorry. Leave them now if you'd like. What did my father say? That if somebody leaves someone alone, he would kill them. Did he mention the name Sam Hunt? I think he did. Well, maybe. Uh, then I, I can explain all of this quite easily. You see, my father came here because he thinks your husband is a photographer named Sam Hunt. Well, as you can see, my husband is a photographer, but we can clear this all up right away. Like, in my bedroom on my dresser, there's a photo of Sam and I. It's a wedding photograph in Pearl Frame. Uh, I'm afraid that won't help me very much. You see, I have never seen this man. Just who is he anyway? Uh, about three years ago in Montreal, uh, while my wife was there, my father tells me, she and this man became um, acquainted. So your wife met some guy three years ago and now your father threatens to kill him? My father alleges that they've been seeing each other from time to time ever since. And now, if you'll excuse me, Mrs. Hendricks, I must go. <laughs> Mr. Rowe, there's, there's just one thing I don't quite understand. How did you get here today? Did, did you follow your father here? I, uh, in a way, yes, I did. But then, then, then you were waiting outside. All the time he was in here, why didn't you stop him? I, uh, I didn't follow him here exactly. Then how exactly did you know this address? I was hoping I would have to tell you this. Please, tell us. I believe my father followed my wife to this apartment. Wife? 
one. Last Sunday, my father invited us to dinner at his club, and uh, my wife arrived late and said she couldn't stay because she had to call a friend who was flying to Montreal the next day and she had something to give him. Then my father became very testy and didn't want to know his name and what it was she had to give him. And finally she said, Well, if you must know, it's that doll of mine that you broke. And she just got up and walked out. Yes, it was a musical doll. Was it? Yes. You say your wife has given a doll to a friend who was flying into Montreal? That's right. Why did she have to do that? Because this doll was just a toy. It had been specially made for her in Montreal. It played a little tune that was a favorite of hers. Mm -hmm. Her friend said he would take it and make her and have a fix and then give it back to her. And my wife, my wife left the restaurant that night. My father said to me, it's that doll Sam Hunt gave her. And then he followed her. This morning I found this note under my door and it just says, Sam Hunt lives at 27B Grogan Street in Greenwich Village. Dad. Then this morning, when I noticed Luciana hadn't returned home last night. Who had it returned this morning? Luciana, uh, my wife, but she frequently comes to Manhattan and decides to stay with her friends. She usually phones by now, but um, so far we haven't heard anything. Shall I get it, Susie? Excuse me, Mrs. Hendricks, I must go find my father. Hello? Yes, I'll take the message. No, I'll take it. No, but his son is here right now. Mr. Rowe, don't go! It's the police. They want to speak to you. No, they are gone. But it's about your wife. And and your father. What? He, he's at the police station. Hello? Speaking. That's right. No, she hasn't, but... Is she hurt? No, tell me now! Mr. Rowe! Mr. Rowe! What? Don't go! Oh, well, of course not. He just left the door open, that's all.
so I thought it was a present for me, but it said no. It was a present for a little girl in the hospital. Someone from Montreal had given it to him. Somebody said he never met it before. And so Sam took it to the hospital. No. This woman. It must have been Mrs. Rowe. She came here late last night to pick it up, but Sam couldn't find it. It must still be here somewhere. And the woman who didn't show up last night, Christiana, that was Mrs. Rowe too. Well, take it easy, Susie. Suppose Sam did know her. That's not so serious. Mike, can you see a girl photograph, a wedding photograph of Sam and I on my dresser? No photo. Oh, that's what the old man is carrying his left. He's taking a photograph of Sam and I to the police. Let's call Carly. No! You mustn't say anything to the police. You remember all those questions they were asking about where Sam was? And the doll? And about the murdered woman? They must think that... They must think that he killed her. Susie! What is it? There's a police car just down the street. They're watching this house. Come on. Hello? Yes. Yes, it is. Asbury Park? Let me speak to him. He caught the 5 o'clock to Manhattan? He wasn't on it. But he must have been. Maybe he missed it. If he had, he'd have known. Let me speak to him. Are you okay? No! That's the third time it happened already. I've broken a lamp in the bedroom. Let me help you out no. then. If you could at least remember where Sam keeps the keys of filing cabinet. I can't understand why Sam has a phone by now. Susie, we can't wait for Sam's phone. We have to find the doll and anything else that connects him to Mrs. Rope. And we have to do it before Carlino comes back and finds out. If we don't... The freezer. What do you mean back in the freezer? The key of the filing cabinet. I knew it was in a funny place. Is it there? Yes, it's frozen in. There should be a complete all bill there, too. Put it in there when we first moved in here, just in case we ever starved to death. Is the doll in there? No, but this is. Oh, yes, these are all the keys that we have. There's one for everything that's locked. There should be a small key on a large paper clip with a tag. Small suitcase? That's it. That's where Sam keeps his important papers and stuff. Thanks, Mike. I'm feeling better now. Except for this safe, I 
being just now here. Mike, is this the light that hangs down from the ceiling? Yes, it is. On now? On. Why? Nothing. Only I realized that Carmino needed to open the blinds to read something, and yet that switch was on. I felt it. Well, I mean, it's on now, anyway. Do you think Sam could have put the doll in the safe? In the safe? No, it couldn't be in there. Mr. Rook did the same thing. Did what? He opened the blinds, didn't he? Did he? Well, I presume he didn't close them. See, do you remember how I heard the chunks when Mr. Rook came down the stairs? Yes. Why? Well, at first I thought he was the old man. You mean they were together? Yes. Of course I realized right away I was wrong, but he had exactly the same walk as his father. And the same shoes. Oh, uh, you, you mean they sounded the same? But exactly the same. New shoes. And one of them squeaked a little bit. You probably didn't notice. No. You're wearing loafers. Sam wears them most of the time. Is that police car still outside? Yes. And they're looking this way. Can you see their faces? Not too well. Try, this is very important. Hi. I was just wondering, is one of those men, Mr. Rowe? The, the old man and his son. The junior. No. Now, what would he have to do with the police? There's a, there's a radio in that police car, isn't there? I don't know. Suppose there is. I was just wondering if, just maybe, possibly, Mr. Rogue could be a policeman? What gives you that idea? First of all, Carlino fiddles with the blinds, and almost immediately after, the police phone him. And then, Rogue opens them, and then Carlino phones him. No, no, he phoned you. Or did he? Oh, I see. Sending each other more messages. Via the blinds. Yes! And the police radio. Yes! Something like that. You see, if, Sam, if they did suspect Sam, it would be a pretty neat trick. When Carlino first asked me about the doll, I nearly told him all about it. I'm, I don't think the police work like that, Susie. See, I just know Mr. Rook's story and Sam's don't match, but I forgot something. What? That I know Sam, and I don't know Mr. Rook at all. Do I? Look, Susie, if, if Sam can explain all this, then fine. There's nothing wrong, but if he can, Susie, I want to help him. How about you tell me about the safe? In the safe? No, it couldn't be in there. Well, because it just isn't ours. You see, the woman who had this apartment before us, she tried to sell it to us. Of course, for 200, then 100, and then 50. And then when she realized that we really didn't want it, she locked it. Sam even, even saw her deliberately walk outside and drop the key down the drain. Susie, are you making this up? Why should I? Not that I blame you, of course. I don't think I'd feel comfortable opening my safe up for a complete stranger. Even if I could see him. Now, have I been treating you like a complete stranger? Well, no. Still. I just wish that doll was in the safe. Then nobody could have it, could they? Well, I wouldn't be too sure about that. If the police get a warrant, and they may, they could have it open. Then let's just hope they try. They'll have to drill it open, and that would take hours, wouldn't it? And by that time, Sam will be home. I guess you're right. You'd better be sure if it's in there. You really believe? Not, not now, but when I'm gone. You're going? Where? To the apartment where I've been staying. Why? Just to get my things. I'll bring them here. But do you have to go now? Someone else is moving in tonight. I have to turn the key in. I won't be long. Well, then give me your number before you go. What number? Where are you going now? But it's just around the corner. But in case I'm here delayed, or if I do find the doll. I, uh, I think I have it written down somewhere. Yes, here it is, but 
Can you remember it? Sure, I can. Just a second. Okay. Ready? W A four. That's nine two four. Same as this one. Go on. Five. Three. O. Nine. Five three oh nine. That's a stinker. There's always that one magic number. Oh, okay. So I'll be thirty in two years. And three threes make nine. And two threes make six. But it's five, not six. So it's nine, two, four, five, thirty. No. Five, three, zero, nine. That's right. But how long can you remember that? About two and a half minutes, so hurry. Oh, and Mike, uh, lock this door and the street door as you go out, just in case Carlito comes back. I'll let you in. Okay, huh. And Mike? Yes? I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't come by today. be a police car outside. Do you see it? No. Look carefully. Are you sure? No police car. It must have gone then. There was one there a few moments ago. Can you see a policeman? Anywhere? No. Or anyone who might be watching this house? Don't think so. There's not many people around. And it's still raining. Can I get down now? Yes, of course. Oh, wait. Sam used to make his calls from a phone booth outside when we first moved in here. And I think it's near the traffic lights. Do you see it? Yes! There's one by the parking lot at the end of the street. Ooh, is there a car parked near there? One of those Volkswagen buses. Anyone in it? I can't see. It has curtains all around. Is something the matter, Susie? You look awfully worried. It's nothing. I'll be all right when Sam gets home. Would you like me to stay with you until he... There's a man getting out now. The Volkswagen? Yes. Can you see his face? Is he Mr. Roth, the man who's out as a detective? I can't see who it is, but he's talking to someone inside. Now he's coming this way! Sam hasn't done anything, has he? No, of course not. Honey, do you remember that doll that your mother asked you about yesterday? What about it? It belonged to the woman who was murdered just outside here last night. And the police found out that- Look out! What is it? There's a man in the window. No, but he's still looking. It's the man with the Volkswagen. Don't let me see the doll! Now he's gone. That's the street door. I'll run out back to see if you can 
lock it. Oh, we can't. Daddy got the key with him. We've got to hide that doll quickly anywhere. I'll take it upstairs. No, no. in here. You don't seem very surprised to hear that. Uh, well, from the way he was acting, I suspect that something must have happened. You seem to have been searching for something since I was here last night. Yes, some um, bags to the vacuum cleaner. Oh, some bags to the vacuum cleaner. Well, uh, maybe I can help you look. Oh, no, you needn't bother. Oh, no bother at all. You know, the other day, my wife lost her only can of and you'll never guess where she found it. The washing machine. That's right. Just thought you might have done the same thing. No, but I'd rather you didn't search for it now. Are you sure you weren't searching for something else? Are you sure you weren't searching for a doll? A doll? I don't know what you mean. A doll that your husband brought back from Canada and which Mrs. Roach came here to collect the other night. My husband never knew Mrs. Roach. You know he did. Mr. Roach now recognizes your husband from a photograph that his father has. You mean she, you mean when she stole from our bedroom? And the old man remembers seeing your husband and Mrs. Roach together several times. Now where else might that doll be? In this sink. Perhaps. Why would my husband be all in there? And if he did, you couldn't open it anyways, could you? As it so happens, I could. You could? Yes. Then will you open it? For you? Yes. Now? Yes. Certainly not. You'll need a warrant for that, and you know it. Oh, we'll have a warrant in no time. Then you'll have to blast it open. You'll get no help from me. It won't take us 20 minutes to drill that open, and before your husband gets back. And in the meantime, you are not to leave this house. Sergeant, Mr. Roach saw the 6th Precinct. 
he's probably left there by now. Why? I have to tell him something very important. Would you mind giving me his phone number? His phone number? You're not going to tell me he didn't give it to you. Well, of course he did, but I don't have it on me. Maybe you can get him information. He lives in Scarsdale. I already tried, and it's not listed. Oh, I know how to do it. Now look, that line's for emergencies only. I can dial my office direct. It's just possible he may still be there. Thank you. Hello, it's Carlino. Is Mr. Rope still there? No, the son. Mrs. Hendricks would like to speak with him.
art and studio. It's um, 78 West 8th Street. 78 West 8th Street. I'll find it. Go on, Mike. Get out of here and good luck. Carlino came back while you were gone. He did. Yes. But you didn't let him in. Well, I had to. He should have seen us. The doorbell was going off and the phone was ringing. I could hardly tell which was which. What did he want? Nothing. He just asked a lot of silly questions and was searching all over the room for the doll, but he even looked in the washing machine. But it's all right now. He now thinks it's in the safe, and he's going to have a warrant to have it drilled open, but by the time he gets that, there just won't be a doll, will there? There sure won't. Go on, Mike, and hurry. Uh, lock the street door, and this one as you go out. All right. Go around the entire apartment, turning on all the lights. On or off? On, on. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, honey. I'm not mad at you. It's just those men are coming back here. That's okay, Susie. I'm not mad either. Is it dark outside yet? No, not quite. I wish it would hurry up. Um, they just turned on the street lamps. Good. Can you close the close the drapes? Everything's on. In here too? Yes. Okay. Now, go in the entire apartment and keep an eye on which lights I turn off when I hit each switch. Ready? Okay. Bedroom. Bathroom. All out in there. Ceiling. That one. Which one? Sorry, on Sam's bench. That one I want to keep. Now don't be frightened, honey. I'm going to turn this one off just for a second. I won't be frightened. Now, 
Can you see anything at all? No! Little door? Yes! Can you see me moving? Look very carefully. Yes, just a little. Then there must be a light coming from somewhere. But where is it coming from? From under the door at the top of the stairs. Yes. Okay, okay. Go in the stair closet. There should be a room in there. Take it, go out in the hallway, and flash every light you can see. Will do. Mike, I was expecting you. Well, did you get to the studio all right? As a matter of fact, I did. I don't know whether you've ever been there or not, but there is no desk. And no dolls. How long have you known? About what? Me. Well, that's better, Mike. Now we can talk like sensible people. Is it a mistake? I'll have to buy it. Go on, then. How much? Not with money. I'll trade you. Truth for truth. Let's start with Sam and Mrs. Rowe. True or false? Do you know where it is? I can't trade if you don't know. I know. Is it here? How about Sam? If I tell you, can I have it now? In a few moments, yes, you could. Then it is here. Well. Sam didn't kill that woman. He met her first at the airport, just like he told you. And you're not a police detective, nor is Rode or Sergeant Carlino. No. Did you even know Sam? No. In the safe? Kill her? No. But Mr. Rode? You don't need to know that. Is it in the safe? Yes. The key, please. It's already open. Thank you. It's here. Yes. Yes, now. It may be your only chance. Hello, this is 27 Big Orbit. Should any of you come to Stupid, wasn't it? The key, please. You said I could have it. I'm in a minute. Very carefully, it's somewhere in this apartment. I'm not going to look for it. You're going to give it to me. Now! Then you have to make me give it to you, and I'm not so sure you could do that. Don't think I couldn't. And you have to hurt me. Very badly, and I don't think you could. Then you don't know me very well. I think I do. You can know some people very quickly in a short amount of time. You don't know me at all. You may be able to hurt me a little bit. It won't be enough. Your way. Go on then. Get out of here. You're worse than he is. 
But why? How's Sam going to feel when he comes back here and finds you all? I won't give it to you. Just get out of here. Okay, Susie. You win. You can keep your damn dog. I guess you've earned it anyway. We need one of them to run anymore. We need you both dead. So lies. No more lies. I, I can't tell you much. Who I am, who Carlino is, and we really never knew who wrote was anyway. We only met him last night. But no more lies. Joseph. When Rope was in here doing his old man act, Carlino and I flipped a coin. Well, he won. I can't tell you why we had to kill Mr. Rope, but we did. And so we agreed that once I had gotten the doll, Carlino would go around the back and pick Rope and I up. Only when Mr. Rope got there, this gave Pontiac straight to the head. You'd better go, Mike. Well, what are you going to tell about? We need Sam and Nilo. Always? That's a promise. We'll never meet again. And I won't give you away. What about Sam? I'll do as I tell him. You say I am grateful. Well, that's much like thanking someone for not running you over with a bus, but you could have hurt me if you didn't. Goodbye, Susie. Where will you go now? Run? I am running to a Charlotte. Not enough. Won't be the first time. There's still that $20 bill in the fridge. If it helps. We don't have to put it back, but thanks just the same. Well, goodbye then. Uh uh. No see, no tell. Good luck. children have gone to sleep, we can talk. I'm going to lock us in, Susie. So, the dog it was that died. <laughs> <clears throat> of course, I knew they'd try and kill me the moment we had the dog. But when Carlino walked off his car just now, he watched it start up all by itself and drive straight at him. I couldn't resist switching on the light just to catch his expression. I don't think I've ever seen anyone look quite so surprised. arrived at Asbury Park, he received a phone message which said you had had a slight accident and by the time they've kept him waiting around there, I'll have been finished! So, will you give it to me now? Please. I won't give it to you. I won't 
give it to you. I won't give it to you. You remind me of someone else who talks like that. Only, only, she said, I don't know where it is. I don't know, over and over again. Oh, I've heard people talk like that. Oh, when she was born. Stubborn. I don't know. She answered all my questions. She went on. Other things. Other things that just might be useful to me. And then she went on. <laughs> Other things. Little, little intimate things about herself and um and Mike and Carlino I, I, I can tell you nothing I, I don't want to know anymore but, but then she went on and on and on and then she was dead
Let me stay out here. I'll sit at the table. And I'm there. And I'll keep knocking at the table. So you know I'm there.
you may. Now put it on the table! And back to your place! May I have the key to the bedroom? And now, if you'll get in the bedroom, please. Why would you want to ask me if you'll just go? I'd like to do that, Susie. But I have one more that needs to be obeyed. You know the one I mean? That clever, arrogant girl needs to be punished. No, 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 no. I'm only going to do what you were going to do to me. I'm going to lock you in there. Go on. That's right. But you mustn't shout. If I hear you scream, I'll set fire to the stairs. And then no one will be able to help you until the firemen come. And by that time, ah! 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 Susie! 